Hello, my name is Jake McIsaac, and in this speech, I'll be informing you about gun violence and how deaths by firearms are increasing every year. There were over 24,000 suicides by firearm in 2020, more than 10 terrorist attacks on American soil since 2009 that were perpetrated only by a gun, and almost 75% of murders in 2019 were used by a firearm. The most startling fact of them all is that there were over 230 school shootings in the year of 2021 and the United States hasn't seen a decrease in active shootings in decades. School shootings hit too close to home. My aunt used to teach in the first grade classroom where the majority of the Sandy Hook victims lost their lives. And for my credibility, my father and I both have our gun licenses, and we have taken multiple tests and been to the fire range multiple times. Today I'm going to be talking about not only gun violence, but gun control as well, and how we've done very little to figure out why gun violence is increasing every year, even with laws and regulations enforced. I'll be discussing a brief history of gun violence in America, our nation's gun regulations, and new regulations that could possibly show a positive change in gun violence for once. The Center for, the Center for Disease Control reported 70 school shootings in 2017. Since then, the U.S. has seen an increase every year. In 2021, the CDC reported that there were over 230 school shootings just that year. Here's a bar graph of the shootings that took place in 2021. As you can see, the highest bar here represents 236 school shootings in 2021. Without school shootings, mass shootings alone are steadily increasing as well. Greg Hallman, a reporter, reported that since 2009, there have been over 10 terrorist attacks that are perpetrated only by a firearm. Moving on, unfortunately, a portion of gun violence comes from suicides. Pretty alarming that someone that mentally unstable has possession of a firearm. The CDC reported over 24,000 suicides in 2020 that were carried out by a gun. And the Department of Justice does prohibit the possession of firearms from defective people or anyone who has been admitted to an institution. And the government can create warrants in a timely manner to seize guns in a timely manner. However, that is if the government cares enough. While the government has implemented laws and regulations for firearms, the number of shootings, suicides, and incidents are increasing every year. Now that, now gun laws and regulations need to be passed or altered at least. Each state does have their own gun regulations. However, a study by the Center of American Progress found 10 states with the weakest gun laws had three times more gun violence than the states with the toughest and most complex gun laws. Another study by Johns Hopkins University showed that when Connecticut required their, per their people to obtain a permit in order to purchase a firearm, the homicides per perpetrated by firearms dropped by 40% while Missouri repealed a similar law, resulting in homicides perpetrated by guns rising by 25%. Although the shootings in the U.S. are increasing every year, yet little to no laws and regulations are passed. 2017, Stephen Paddock opened fire on a music festival in Las Vegas. More than 50 people were killed. According to KTNV Las Vegas, they reported that Paddock had almost 50 firearms in his possession that have all been modified legally and illegally. Yes, Las Vegas has very transparent gun regulations, but fully automatic weapons are banned everywhere. However, accessories such as bump stocks make semi-automatic weapons extremely similar to fully automatic weapons. Moving on, people must face the fact that even with laws and regulations enforced, they only help to a certain extent. People will still break the law, which is what makes them criminals. Now everyone tends to avoid the shooter's side. As hard, it is it, as hard as it is to listen to their story, they need to be looked into more, which could help explain their real motives and their mental process, which could aid the government, school districts, and organizations on how to prevent fi future firearm incidents. Nicholas Cruz, the Stoneman Douglas shooter, murdered 17 people and injured 17 others. However, many people through a variety of platforms had information on Cruz's concerning behavior. Here is a slide that shows some of the some of his reports of his concerning behavior. In a meeting by the Major Stoneman Douglas High School Council, people had knowledge of Cruz's concerning behavior that they did report, but no one did anything with the information that was given in this slide. You can see some of the unreported behaviors of Nicholas Cruz below. Salvador Ramos was an 18-year-old who bought a rifle on his 18th birthday. This was the same rifle he used to murder 21 people. 19 of which were elementary age school children. This was in Texas where gun laws are almost non-existent, however. 
LBC News London announced that the former friends of family of Ramos stated that he stopped showing up to school after the pandemic and added that Ramos experienced bullying for his lisp and for wearing makeup. Friends even reported that he would cut himself on his face for fun, shoot random people with BB guns, egg cars, and post photos of his dream guns. People even reported that he would post videos of him screaming at his mother who had a severe substance abuse issue. All of this, and no one did anything with this information. We could have prevented half of these shootings. At the end of the day, no law or regulation can stop a criminal from committing a crime. But as humans, we need to listen more and let everyone's voice be heard. The Congress, educational systems, and workforce need to focus more on bettering themselves and their people and then fo- more, more on their people than focusing on laws, right, rules, and regulations. A better people equals a better world. As I bring my speech to a close, I want to reemphasize that these shootings are happening in our backyard. Gun violence is increasing every year, and gun control needs to be better, and our nation needs to truly learn how to listen to others that need that, uh, to listen to others that need to be heard. Firstly, I talked about the history of gun violence and how it is increasing every year at an alarming rate. And the next topic was how states with stronger firearms firearm laws have a significantly lower rate of shootings and how these laws and regulations slowly help lower gun violence. Finally, my last topic was how our nation needs to do a better job at listening. Sometimes reaching out is all someone needs. If we have reached out to these mentally destroyed murderers, we likely could have saved these families from a destroyed life. Gun violence is only con- is only one controversial topic that our nation is facing today. But there have been over 25 reported mass shootings since the start of 2023. That is not including poorer areas that see gun violence every day. Thank you.